I've been brought this HP laptop and although it's switched on at the moment, the screen is completely black. Well, it would be if it wasn't for the reflection. Even a casual glimpse at the machine shows that it has suffered uh, considerable violence and damage, and it would be fair to assume that the screen is broken. However, I've inspected it carefully, and I can't see any of the usual telltale signs of, of cracks or, or blows to the side. Before we go rushing off to eBay to buy a new screen, there's one more test that I like to do, and that's to shine a light onto the screen. And when we do that, we can see that the screen is in fact running. It's just that the backlight is out. So there we can see the date and time on Friday the 6th of September. OK, it says it in German, but hey, we're all cosmopolitan where I live. I guess it's time to get the thing apart and see what's going on with the backlight. First thing to do is to remove all of the screws. There are two screws which are underneath the rubber feet. So don't forget to take those out. I like to keep the screws on this strip of magnet that came out of a, an old fridge. The first thing I did was to take out the battery and now we can take out the DVD drive. We should now be able to separate the top and the bottom parts. For that I like to use an old blunt utility knife blade. This machine is absolutely gross. It's the most disgusting machine I've ever worked on. I'm surprised that the thing is working at all. There are signs of some liquid. I wouldn't even care to speculate what uh, that has come inside. There's corrosion and dust everywhere. So I need to get that cleaned up. The screen appears to be just clipped together. The hinge here you can see has already popped. The procedure will be to go along and unclip the rest of the screen. Along the bottom of the screen there appears to be the, the backlight. Clearly the hinge and the side part of the screen are broken. I'm going to have to unscrew all of these screws and remove the screen itself so that we can take a look at the lighting module. Now this is the connector on the back of the screen as I've just turned it over. We can see at the end there the connector is not fully home even though it's got this sticky stuff on it. Let's just see if we can push it back in. Well, are you feeling lucky, punk? Just as a quick test, I've temporarily connected the LCD connector back up. Let's press the power button now and see what happens. It looks like we have success. So there we can clearly see the date and time again. Obviously it's the damage to the rear of the screen casing that has caused stress. The hinge is broken as well and that has resulted in the connector coming loose. I will have to give the client the option of buying a new rear cover or possibly I can just patch it up with some glass fibre tape and araldite. We'll have to see. I've looked online for the cost of just the replacement plastic back and it was silly money, 50 plus euros and maybe two weeks to get here. I have decided to effect a, uh, a repair. The first thing I've done is to super glue the two parts together. That'll ensure that they're aligned as I apply the epoxy. I have some fine fiberglass mat which I'm going to epoxy down in these places here and then I'm going to flip it over and put a piece across the back. This is a technique I've used many times and has proven to be uh, very very strong. Only time will tell. Here I've uh, applied the epoxy to the fiberglass mat on the top of the case. What I'm doing now is just to clean off the excess using acetone. Acetone is very good for cleaning up uh, epoxy and making a, a neater job of it. A bonus tip for anybody that's watched this far is that you can also use acetone to thin epoxy. If you have say a particular complex curve or something, if you thin the epoxy down it makes it much easier to apply either stippling it on or just brushing it on. Finally a, a picture of the finished job after it's dry. Not a bad effort I don't think. 